April the 25th with um stars Tony Nicole, Crystal Rogers, and Danny Nicole. And we premiere April the 25th on um on our YouTube channel. And we'll also be um, you know, Facebook Live and as well. Um it's a it's a project that's near and dear to my heart because we're 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 coming to impact and inspire you. And those ladies uh bring the realness that you know will will definitely capture your attention. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, that coming out. And then of course the top of the bottom tour was I've been working on with my partner Nick Faults uh for several months. And um I will say that it's coming this summer. I can't tell you, I'm not gonna say at what point because you know we're still trying to get through, you know, the pandemic. So um there'll be an announcement right after we, you know, get through this time because we understand that, you know, what's going on has gotta run its course. And once it does, then we will, you know, we will announce, you know, uh lineups and um where we're gonna be at um right after we get through this time. Wow. Wow. Okay. So where, who are some of the artists that you work with? Who are some names that um, that you work with pretty closely? You had a you had a young man on your show, Jay Locke. He is um a guy that I consider a brother and a friend of mine. Um not rock with, you know, he's an amazing talent. Um also Reggie Rock. He just dropped a um his his C D this past Friday, um, called Dope. And um it's it's amazing. He's He's been doing his thing, and he's he's a um he's an artist that's making an impact, you know, as well. And also, Mr. Dark Eye, Mr. Dark Eye, um, it just dropping a single at midnight tonight called "Don't Be Mad." You mm-hmm. know, get it on all your digital platforms. Uh, midnight tonight. Um, so those are three of the dopest artists, independent artists, um, that I'm working with very closely, and also um, artists, the artist treats. A lot of people haven't, you know what I'm saying, haven't heard, some have, some haven't. But we're going to introduce you to her this summer. Um, she got a single that's dropping and also a video as well. Um, also, Angelique um, Estrella. She is an artist out of the um, D.C. area. She speaks 18 different languages and also sings in 18 different languages. Um, and also raps as well. We're going to introduce you, reintroduce y'all to her this summer. So we got a lot of artists you know what I'm saying, that are coming, that we're going to, you know, we're, we're bringing to a city near you. And all of them have dope music. And, you know, we're sharing, we're sharing their work on, on all the platforms and stuff. But if you miss it, trust and believe, um, you'll have an opportunity to catch us live in your city real soon. Wow, very nice, very nice. Well, yes, Mr. Uh, J-Lock, he um, was on our podcast, I believe, early last month, and we were talking to him about what he was doing and getting in on this tour with you. Um, I know that I talked to him about a week ago, and he was telling us about his Alpha Men Care and how it is really taking off and how he is about to put it out there to to help others gain income too um and also to earn income too by um being alpha men care distributors so i was pretty excited about that and being able to support him in that you gonna get in on that uh I'm, it's, it's an awesome opportunity you look at it the number of people that are, are out of work or losing their jobs or not able to go back to their jobs what a tremendous opportunity um mm-hmm. to get in on something that is going to be helpful you know what I'm saying, and you and also can earn you, you know, income as well. Um, it comes right on time, the way I look at it, because you know we're we're in a time where, you know, what we have 6.6 million people that filed for unemployment last week alone. Mm-hmm. So it's a time that, you know, we're in need. People need uh, ways to, you know, provide for their families. So, you know, Jay is doing a, a tremendous job with, you know, what I'm saying, offering that opportunity, and I hope that a lot of our business, you know, independent entrepreneurs will look at doing some of the same things because we're at a time, you know, in our community where we need the upliftment. Yes, we do. We definitely do. Um, we were talking to, um, was that yesterday? Mm. I just had a, a block. Yes. <laughs> 
Miss Benton, we were talking to Miss Benton yesterday, and she was saying that uh, she is working on positioning herself right now to be a business owner herself, to be an entrepreneur herself outside of her organization of Diva Nation. And so, talking to her and then talking to several other people during the day yesterday, um, I decided to interview some people this month who have resources or have business opportunities for people that are at home right now because there are so many people that have been laid off and lost their jobs and so i think it's really it's really good if we're able to support each other and um be able to provide business opportunities for people definitely yeah we do we have a, a time right now in our country where if we focus and do the thing that is you know should be the foundation of all communities and that's coming together and helping one another, you know, it's, it's amazing things that we can do, you know, together as one. If we just, you know, stay away from being distracted and just lock in on what, you know, what could be beneficial in order to grow, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's so many things that we can do. With Big Woo Radio, we're, we're always trying to find ways to, you know, keep inspiring and impact and, and, and opportunities as well as we continue to grow. And even in this time, we're steadily working behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying, trying to figure things out. And also, um, T. Nicole Enterprises, shout out to Tony Nicole. Mm -hmm. We got things coming, you know, real soon. This, you know, this is going to be impactful and going to be inspiring as well. So just excited about, you know, um, the, the paths and the doors that God has opened, you know what I'm saying, in my life and giving me, you know, platforms to be able to, you know, enter in and, and I'm pretty sure you know, Tiffany, your name has been mentioned in rooms that you ain't even set foot in yet. And those are the blessings in this life, you know what I'm saying, that we all, you know, look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Y'all talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no you. I definitely appreciate that. So what... Um, what actually got you into this business doing doing radio? I know we talked briefly before, but let's talk, let's talk about it now. What got you into it? Um, what started off your career in radio and supporting music artists? When I was in high school, uh, I did an internship at a local radio station here in the Rock Hill, South Carolina area, WRHI. It's mm -hmm. something that I always wanted to do. Um, but I got sidetracked, or shall I say, my, you know, I ended up, you know, going to school for mass communications uh, at, at Claflin University. But I um, ended up finish, you know, ended up finishing and, and but the path, my path got directed to, um, you know, working with people with disabilities. And okay. so my purpose kind of, you know, overtook my, what I wanted to do. But at that time I, I, I was obedient. I didn't understand exactly what was going on, but God was moving something in my life. So I ended up, you know, after I finished up school, I ended up working at a, um, at a local, local residential um, facility um, in York, South Carolina. And it just started my path um, on the better part of the last 18, eight, well, the better part of the last 25 years working wow. um, with both children and adults um, with, you know, with special needs and disabilities. And with that, God whispered and made a promise that if, if you are obedient, I will open doors for you that, you know what I'm saying, you couldn't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you, I understand what you want to do, but let me, let me tell you what I need you to do in order to walk in your purpose. Right. And so uh, I, was obedient, I was obedient, but I know I was stubborn at, at times as <laughs> well, because I was still trying to come into, you know, right. come into it. But I see it now and I see the path and, and doing those things, it opened up, you know what I'm saying, uh, the radio side of things where I was able to. I've always had a love for music. That's all genres of music, love music. And so I developed a passion for live music, you know what I'm saying, when I was working in, a, um, you know, working on one of my brothers, um, in the, you know, doing, you know, live events and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you know, I, I ended up running into my man, Corey Woods, Big Woo, and we... You know what I'm saying? We we formed Big Wood Radio and the rest is, is history. You know what I'm saying? We we we've been working really hard and, and and developing things and still have some real special things, you know, to come. So the radio part of it has been this stream blessing. I mean, I look at it, uh, you know, I'm here and I'm doing an interview with you. You know what I'm saying? And 
less than you know 45 minutes or so i'll be on i'll be co-hosting with some guy named jay the mm -hmm. digital meet and greet with rhyme schemes i mean those are things that you know what i'm saying 10 years ago i couldn't tell you i'd be doing but here right. we are 10 years later and and the blessing the blessings are overflowing yeah yeah definitely yes uh jonathan is going to be um back on our show next tuesday um making up for a reschedule from last week so he's going to be back gotcha. on with us on tuesday uh talking to us i mean tuesday someone's trying to correct me <laughs> so jonathan is going to be on next tuesday the 14th um talking to us about how to support um small businesses and with him doing marketing and promoting of small businesses, I wanted to get him back on because this is a really, really hard time for people that have small businesses and um, are having to literally shut down business right now. I know that there are people online like um, Nadine and Maria and uh, Brandon, all of those are um, have small businesses are getting very, very creative about keeping their businesses going. I know Nadine, Nadine is in Concord Mills Mall, where the mall is closed. So she is doing a lot of online things right now. And right now, her and Brandon alike are making um, hand custom masks for people and donating. Oh, wow proceeds to, um, Nadine is donating proceeds to children in Africa, and Brandon is do donating to, to hospitals and nurses and doctors here in the local community. So they are finding creative ways to continue to have an income stream, but also helping others as well. Wow, look at God, that's amazing in so many different ways, because it's so easy to get discouraged in times like this, yeah. but look at them, like they, you know that must receive faith and that moving through press through i'm I'm going to find a way i'm gonna make a way because my, you know the way that i think and the way that i believe is set up different that that's amazing so many different right. ways that's awesome right so. and they're not just putting out um nothing they're putting out some really really good looking masks <laughs> i've already inquired about uh getting some for the family so these are not just yeah. those plain masks or the the mask you're tearing up shirts at home and putting it around your face <laughs> they're actually yeah. spending quality time on making these masks so that they are attractive um but yeah. also giving back to the community so um, i'm very proud of them but there are some business owners who unfortunately don't have that option they don't have um, products that they are, that they sell online, or you know, they don't have services that are is um, uh, how can I say is marketable in the way to continue their income online. Some people don't have that luxury. Um, so, what are you guys doing to to stay afloat during this time? Making shows, being creative, um, working, finishing up projects, so that when we when we get to the time that we're able to go back and do a live events, we're, we're, we're coming full force. You know, this is the time when we plan and we prep and we put things together. Um, and so when we do get, you know, to, to the point that we're able to, you know, gather and come back out and, and, and do things, you're going to see, you know, us up front and center. Um, and and I'm, I'm excited. But in the meantime, you know, you got to incorporate your patience and you got to be obedient in this time. Um, and, and so that's what we're doing. But we're continuing to work and we continue to create all those projects that I, I spoke about exclusively on air for the first time. <laughs> those those projects, you know what I'm saying, are going to be really, really dope. And I can't wait for everybody to really see them and see how creative we, we become, you know what I'm saying, and doing those things. And um, it's what you have to do during this time, what you're doing with your show. I mean, you're not just speaking up, you're inspiring and you're impacting. And that's, and, that's, and that's the beauty of what, you know, technology is like, what are you gonna do with the platform that you have? You know what I'm saying? And look at what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You're getting people on your show, they're being informative, they're giving a testimony, they're mm -hmm. talking and somebody needs to hear that. So, I mean, kudos to you, you know what I'm saying? For being consistent and keeping, you know, keeping going what you're doing with um the Speak Up and Inspire series. Uh, it's almost like I remember when you birthed it and what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? I, I know it can be a little pressing and get a little discouraging, but yeah. I admire you are sticking with it and believing in what you're doing. 
that right there, that, that passion right there, it, you know, everybody's not built for that. So God bless you for what you're doing. And, and I wish you nothing but, you know, success. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I remember talking to you, um, you and Corey, when I was first starting and talking to you about what it was that I was doing and what my my mission was. And basically that was to um, showcase people who are not only business owners, but that they are also doing something to inspire others. You have to have those two components to be on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, and so we have successfully been doing that for over a year now. Um, very proud of the way it is going, even though we, I seem to keep having technical difficulties every third or fourth show, <laughs> but we get it done um, and we get the, the, the interviews in and people are patient with us because they want to be a guest on the show. And then people that have been watching since we started look forward to it so um i'm really grateful to have you um supporting me you've been supporting me from the i believe the third show i believe so we're now yeah. on our 40 something show <laughs> so i really That's appreciate awesome. that i do know that i am going to um, be interviewing with you so we're going to be switching roles on april 24th um and so tell us about that show on your on fridays tell us about that show um who does it showcase and What's, what's the what's the mission of that show? Florida Poetry Show. You will you will appear on episode two hundred four. So we are two hundred and four shows in. You will be on that particular episode, <laughs> and um, we you know you fit right in with what we do on Fridays. We bring people on that you know what I'm saying are impacting their communities and 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 leaving a legacy. You know what I'm saying. When I think about reality check, when I think about what you poured into your writing, what you have done is you have left a legacy, you know what I'm saying, for your children. And they'll be able to pass on and be like, yo, you know what, my mama was not just, you know what I'm saying, a, a person. She was a hero and she was a legend. And legends live on forever, you know what I'm saying? When you, it's like putting a little, in the book in the time machine and somebody digging it up or what you're doing, you're giving it on the, for, on the forefront. So now you have something that's gonna live forever and ever and ever. And what we're gonna do on April the 24th, we're gonna create another, we're gonna create another piece to that puzzle. You're gonna be able to hear your voice in your interview forever and ever and ever. We're gonna do this show and we're gonna make it an epic, an epic hour, you know what I'm saying, with you. And we're gonna talk about everything that, that, that you got going on and we're gonna promote, you know what I'm saying, your, your book and promote what you're writing and what you got coming up. And uh, you know, I look forward to it because um sunshine you will shine that particular night and we're gonna have we're gonna have an amazing night on the florida courts so april april the 24th at 6 p.m you thank know you. tune in i am looking radio dot com <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'm looking forward to it tell me some some of your favorite guests that you've had on the florida poetry show oh man um two of my favorites are actually co-hosts on the network now uh nima shine and star l they and uh, Nayana Renee, both of them came to us as guests. Okay. But then their particular shows were, were so impactful that we continued, we continued the conversation after, after the show mm -hmm. and decided to push forward with trying to, you know, bring them on and, <clears throat> and do some different things. And so Nima, Nima Sign and Star Air, L is now a co-host on the Floetic Poetry Show. And um, she, she has a Black History segment that we do every Friday, not just in February. We do it every Friday. We okay. highlight Black Black history uh, facts and moments. And then she does uh, a special poetry moment on, on the Floetic show as well. So, you know, and then Nayana Renee, um, she came to us and she is a co-host now on our Bruliana show that just aired um, tonight at, from, at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So okay. she co-hosts that show with um, JB, Mr. 299. So they, they, are two, they are two of the most impactful guests because of the fact that they came to us originally as guests. And mm -hmm. then they, they, you know, and then they decided to pursue roles that they, they didn't know that, that was already being claimed. And wow. they have done an amazing job. And they've been with us, you know, the better part of the last four and a half years. As we push on that five-year anniversary of Big Woo Radio in September, they've been rocking with us, you know what I'm saying, from 
you know, from the times that they came on our, our show and they've been consistent. So I would say, you know, them um, also – when, when I had Tony, the first time I had Tony Nicole on the show, we did a live remote show and had Tony Tony Nicole on the show. Yeah. So that was dope, um, you know, to do that because we put video with radio and, you know, we made it, you know, pretty cool show um, as far as that. And also Radia, uh, Radia Stars is what I call her, Radia Johnson. Yeah, she was an amazing, right <laughs> she is amazing. Yes, yeah, she was an amazing guest. Mm -hmm. um, she's been on the show several times. We've enjoyed her, and um, we look forward to all the projects that she has upcoming. And we actually have a project that we're working on together that we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna, you know, bless the people with, you know, seeing here very soon. So those are some of the few um, of many, godly hundreds of guests that we've had nice. on, on those shows. But uh, yeah, it's, it's such a blessing. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yes. Um, Radia Johnson is a um, a partner with me right now. I met her through um, social media. Someone tagged her in a post when I was looking for uh, domestic violence advocates in different cities for the stomp project that we were doing. And that's how I met her. And um, she is an amazing woman. I just uh, downloaded her book and I plan to read that very soon because it looks awesome sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to be downloading, well, I've already done it. I've already downloaded her book and mm -hmm. um, I am going to be reading that as soon as possible and posting on my blog about it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that because she has, um, there's something about Rithia that just radiates. And so I love her spirit. I love that she is so open and transparent, you know, about her experiences as well. Um, and so we're going to be doing the stomp with her, I believe. I have to look at my calendar. Since we're safe at home, my calendar has gone out of my head. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to be doing our event with her, I believe, in September. And I know you and I are planning to stomp there in Chester, South Carolina. So um, a lot of big things going on. And you and Radia doing something together, I know it's going to be amazing. Definitely. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be epic. Trust me. Trust it me. It's worth the wait. Worth the wait. Yeah. Good. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, you gotta tell me when this is happening so I can get you back on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's, you and it, her it's both. Be amazing. Yes, you and yeah. her both. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Well, you yeah. brought up um my book, Reality Check, a Survivor Story. Um we dropped the first release in June of 2018. And so mm -hmm. I decided to re-release my book, um, Reality mm -hmm. Check. I decided mm -hmm. to re-release it um, because I realized that there was some, reading the story, if you read the first version of Reality Check, then it was definitely a complete story. But I left out a lot of um, scenes or several scenes in there that were, that were very intimate and very passionate. But mm -hmm. I wanted to put those scenes back in the book. So I decided to release Reality Check again. Um, we did name it book one for the, because I have already written the follow-up books. So this is going to awesome. be book one, and I've already written book two and book three. And the Reality Check is a survivor story. And I wanted to make sure that you were one of the first ones to read it. And so you got the very first copy. Yeah. yeah, I was passed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you been reading it, and what do you think? I have been reading it, and I will tell you this: it is a must. It's a must read. First of all, <laughs> um, and it grabs you as soon as soon as you start reading. It just automatically brings you into um, the story. Like if you can close your eyes and just kind of imagine what's going on as you're reading, it paints a picture, and you really really come into you know your thoughts and in the way that you express what was going on and, and feelings and emotions and, and and it really jumps out at you and grabs you so um i would tell anybody and i'm just i'm just halfway through it and i can tell you and i can't <laughs> wait to finish it up but yeah. if you have an opportunity to get the get the book one please do um and if you got it and you hadn't read it in a long time get get the updated version of it because i tell you what 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 you felt like you got the first time around you read it, 
is nothing like reading it this time in what I would call in its completeness. So, That's you know, true. you really, you really put the period to, you know what I'm saying, that particular version of book one. And and I can tell you it's, it's going to uh, make people want to read uh, two and three. You won't have any problems whatsoever <laughs> um, promoting or, or selling the fact that, hey, you need to get the book. No, you ain't got to worry about it. It's going to be knocking down your inbox and <laughs> your Amazon. And, and they're coming to get it because you were real and you were candid and you were open. And yeah. those things and those qualities are things that that, that really uh, people want to learn something about you. You poured you poured your heart and your spirit out in, in this book, and I imagine you did the same thing in two and three. And for that, you know what I'm saying, that takes a lot. It's brave, you know what I'm saying, and courageous. And for that, you know what I'm saying, the, the fruits of your labor you will see because you 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 poured 110 percent, you know what I'm saying, into this particular book. So congratulations, first of all. And then second of all, be very proud of being able to be open and candid and really dealing with your emotions and what you were feeling and, and really including all the, the nuts and the bolts and the pieces and the meat, all of that. I mean, you really gave a complete look in, in, in this particular um, story that I'm reading. And, and it's amazing. Um, I, you know, I can tell you that my gambit of emotions, even as a man, I got emotions too. Yeah, and I can tell you it it really tears at the at the heart, but it's it's real. And to know that you know a survivor, you know what I'm saying. You really put you really put the stamp on that. You know what I'm saying. And your testimony is real, and somebody needed to hear that, and they needed to see it. And um, it's just amazing that um you were courageous and you put that out there. So be very very proud of Thank what you have done with this and this series that you're presenting. Thank you. Well, I decided to um, release it during um, April. April 1st was my goal, but I think it came out on the 2nd, so I, I reached the goal. <laughs> um, I wanted to release it in April because April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and the book is about a sexual assault survivor. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me, well, why didn't you just write your biography instead of writing a fiction book and giving your experience to you? characters. Um, and I know that when I first started trying to write my book, talking about myself, it was a little hard. So I decided to write Reality Check, a survivor story, and let people know that these are true life experiences that I have given to phenomenal characters. And I've given my experiences to different characters. So the characters are not just um, it's not just one character who is who is sharing some of my experiences. It's several characters in the book that are sharing my experiences. So um, I really appreciate that. I did put a lot into it, and I'm looking forward to um, the project that I'm working on now, which is very personal. It's not fiction. It's going to be nonfiction. Um, it's going to be real, very, very, very deep. Um, and I think it, it will fit very well with the series. Uh, for entertainment purposes, but just for awareness as well. So did you have any questions so far while you're reading or do you have any favorite characters you want to talk about? Um, only question that, that I would have um, just in writing it, when you, when, when you put the pieces together as far as completing it, why did you, why did you feel like you hadn't really put the period and completed the story? What made you go back and, and complete the story? Well, I felt like when I first wrote the story, it was 2008, which is a very, very vulnerable time for me. Um, I had just left um, out of an abusive relationship and was going through a lot of things then. And so I wrote it and it was very raw. Um, but then when I decided to publish it after years of my best friend and, you know, people that I've, that read it over the years, um, when I finally decided to publish it, I thought maybe it was too raw <laughs> or it was too much. Mm. Um, mm. and then I thought this is going to be my first book that I'm publishing with my mom reads it. So <laughs> When my mom started hearing how raw the first release was, she didn't want she didn't want to read it, but she supported me. She went to my book launch with me, um, and so forth. She knows what it's about. She knows about the characters, but she has not actually read it. So I was like, you know what? 
mom didn't read the first one, I'm going to put out a second one and I'm just going to let it all out. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so some scenes from the first one were added to the second release and um, I'm really excited about it because I feel like now the whole story is out. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the motivation behind that. I felt like you cleansed your soul and you, <laughs> you, you released some things that needed to be released so you could be free. Right. And so I asked you, do you have closure now that you have, and you know what two and three is. So do you have closure now that you have completed those, those books as well? Um, closure as far as getting my story out? No, I think the project that I'm writing right now will be my closure. It'll be, um, a, a story that is directly from me about me and there's no no characters so I think when I finish this project that I'm working on now it will definitely be closure but as far as my healing journey I have closure to that and that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now um advocating writing you know working in the public doing things with you to to raise awareness about several you know issues that are in our community so I think that would be my final closure as far as getting my story out there but as far as being a, a survivor yeah I've had that closure. That that's what motivates me to to do what I do. So last question, because um, I don't want to flip it too much before we get to the twenty four. <laughs> but um, what what impact do you want it to have to somebody just walk that same path and may need may need something out of that? What do you want them to get ultimately out of reading your books? Well, this was definitely the reason why. I wrote the book because I wanted to raise awareness to others. And I think for this book, it's a survivor story. And again, it's a survivor story of a sexual assault victim. But there are two other characters in the book who are dealing with um, an interracial relationship, um, dealing with sexual identity and preferences. So all of the books are going to be about raising awareness, but also just letting people know that If you are a victim of any kind of traumatic event, you can make it through with perseverance, with um, the right set of mind, which means investing in your mental health. Going from victim to survivor, I say this all the time, starts with your mental health. And so if people understand that and know that they, if they work on their mental health, if they, um, do not go into a mode of guilt or shame and can admit to themselves that they have been a victim and do the right steps and take the right steps to get where they need to to be, to be able to call themselves a survivor, that you can do it. It might take months, it might take years, but you can make it. Um, I've been through a lot (laughs) in my life, probably more than the average 43 year old woman, but I've been through a lot and I'm standing here now. Um, I know people who have been through worse. I know who people who have been through the same thing, and they are living proof that you can get through anything with, with good mental health, with faith in God, with prayer and a support system. You can get through it. So those are the reasons why I wrote the Reality Chef series, definitely. Awesome. Salute to your strength and your faith. Definitely. Yes, sir. Thank you. I want to say thank you to you for being a platform for, um, I guess I can go ahead and say my, as an artist, um, an artist is, is just not about music. It's about, you know, uh, photography. It's about um, the written word. It's about, you know, just being vocal and being um, creative with different things in your life. Um, so, I just want to say thank you for being a platform for a lot of underground um, artists, for a lot of, you know, indie authors, for self-published um, authors like myself, um, but just being a, a positive male role model and mentor to a lot of people. Um, I talk all the time about how important it is for men to step up and be active in their community. And you have always been very active in your community um, just your job alone is showing the the commitment and the passion that you have for helping people. So I just want to thank you for being who you are, supporting people like me, um, and just 
in who you are. You, you're very motivating. You're very inspiring. You are very, very supportive because you were definitely um, someone that I can talk to when I was dealing with the moment in my life. And I just want to thank you for that. You're always one of my favorite people to talk to, um, good or bad. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for that. I'm sure a lot of people are thankful to you as well. I'm definitely um, humble and, uh, and I stay uh, focused. We, we still got work to do. So, I mean, each and every day is a brand new opportunity to do that. So we, we're going to continue on and, and, and leave as much of a legacy that we possibly can so that people can, can learn how to, if they go through certain situations, they can learn how to deal with it and learn how to cope and, 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 get, and get to uh, being able to just, you know, get back to uh, a normal that they can cope with everything that is going on and still be mentally and spiritually healthy. Right. Um, but it's a day by day process. You don't, you can't put a time, yeah. you know, on that at all. And I wouldn't dare ever do so. You know, if you're out there and you're listening, you're going through something, don't ever let nobody tell you that, oh, you need to get over it or why you ain't, why you still ain't gone over it. No. Yeah, you trust in God. You trust the process. One of the worst things you can say to somebody that's going through something. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's in, yeah, you take your time. One day at a time. One step at a time. You know what I'm saying? Crawl before you walk. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and develop that faith and understanding that, you know, a better day will come. And it's okay if you have a bad day. You know, it's these days are not perfect days, not on earth. You know what I'm saying? Definitely so not. just keep, you know, stay prayed up and, and, and just stay looking for positive things and surround yourself with positive people and positive vibes. And trust me, you'll get through, you know, those tough times. You'll see it, you know, but it's a gradual process. It definitely will. That, that was, that's great. You, you said it, you said it perfectly. Take one day at a time. Um, before we leave, Tell us again, what do you have coming up? Um, how can people reach you? And what is your advice to um, maybe some young men out there who would like to get into the radio industry um, or music industry? And first, um, again, Brave Talk Show debuts April the 25th with uh, Tony Nicole, Danny Nicole and Crystal Rogers. Um, I'm blessed to be producing you know, that. Um, watch the Facebook page, which is James Sherman Thompson on Facebook. Uh, is, uh, follow, that's the best place to follow on there. Also, Big Wolf Radio um, on, the, on Facebook, the Florida Poetry Show on Facebook. Um, also, my Elite Gents podcast. Um, follow, you know, follow that page, and, and we're putting out shows on that. We just got to uh, show number 64, and, you know, we just keep putting it out there. And this is this is in the better part of the last six months. We put out 64 shows. So wow. I'm going to keep, you know, keep doing that as well. Um, what I would say to, oh, Top of the Bottom Tour is yeah. coming this summer. Um, yeah. And I'll give, you, I'll give you some exclusives. You, you heard me talk about three artists tonight yeah. um, on this show. Actually, you heard me talk about four artists mm -hmm. on this show. All four of those artists will appear on tour with us. Um, in that tour, so be looking for advertisement for that real soon. Um, and, and my advice to you know a young young person is aspiring to get in the radio, take it one step at a time, incorporate your patience because it's a virtue, and understand that there's nothing that's, that's not impossible. If you put God in the forefront of everything that you're doing, you will be in those doors. You will you will realize all your dreams, and you'll see that everything that you could ever imagine in being some can be possible. If you stay consistent, you stay connected, you stay dedicated and committed, it can happen. Yes, yes it can. Thank you so much. I don't have nothing else to say. You ended that very, very, very nicely. <laughs> so uh -huh. thank you. Thank you, I appreciate you. And um, for everyone that is going to be watching this, Thank you for watching. Um, continue to support JT or James Sherman Thompson. You can follow him. Um, you can also check out the different uh, platforms that he is on with Big Blue Radio, Poetic Poetry, so many things that he is doing. But also look out for those two exclusive events that are coming up and have a great day. Bye, James. All right. Take care. God bless. Bye.